We're breaking down the techniques that the French Laundry, a three Michelin star restaurant uses to cook rabbit. We will then pair it with fennel and an amazing sauce. At the end, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to prepare the legs. The recipes are on my website, linked in the description. The French Laundry uses rabbits from D'Artagnan, known as Super Saddles, which has the legs removed. Here's how to cut the rabbit the same way. Most likely, your rabbit will have the kidneys and the liver. We don't need the livers for this recipe, but they're great for pate or fried up as a chef snack. Feel where the joint is, then cut in between the leg and the body. Bend the leg back to expose the joint and cut through, repeating on the other legs. For the kidneys, remove them, peel off the outer membranes and set aside. Separate the racks from the saddle by cutting in between the last two rib bones and through the back. To separate the racks, Fill where the cartilage is and cut in between the cartilage and the ribs. Repeat this on the other side and pull. To remove the neck, remove any flat meat and using the tip of your knife, cut along the spine. Using kitchen shears, split each rack lengthwise along the spine to form two individual racks. To fringe the racks, scrape the back of the ribs to break the membrane. Then. Use the tip of the knife to cut in between the bones. Cut the bones so that they're even, then gently pull the meat away. You want to be careful with these toothpick sized bones. They can snap easily. Trim the rib meat away. On a cow, this would be a ribeye. For the saddles, use a sharp boning knife and remove the loins by cutting along both sides of the spine. This is the same area as a New York strip. Use your fingers to remove any flat meat. Flip the back over and use the tip of the knife to release the tenderloins, then pull out. It will be quite small. Trim the flaps, which are similar to flank steak, to one inch wide and the same length as the loins. Placing one loin on the bottom, two tenderloins in the middle, and the last loin on top. The loins taper, so be sure to have one small end and one large end on each side. Fold the flaps around the meat to form a compact cylinder. Arrange six slices of bacon on a cutting board so that they slightly overlap and form a rectangle as wide as the length of the loins. Roll the rabbit loin up in the bacon, trimming away any excess. Tie with butcher's twine at one inch intervals. Wrap the twine around the end, then go under the loops on the bottom. Tie the twine to tighten the end and make a cylinder. One rabbit is enough for two people. To make the caramelized fennel, trim the tops and root end from the fennel bulbs, placing an X on the root end of each. Place the fennel in a pot, covering with cold water. Add in two pieces of star anise, one teaspoon fennel seeds, one bay leaf, one and a half ounces of kosher salt, and two sprigs of thyme. Bring the water to a boil, cover with a lid, and simmer for about 45 minutes. You will know that the fennel is ready when you can easily insert a paring knife into the core. Use a slotted spoon to remove from the pot and refrigerate the fennel. When the fennel bulbs are cold, cut two center cut slices, about half an inch each from each bulb. When I sliced into the fennel, one of the bulbs was slightly mushy, which is why I always buy extra produce. Also, the trim makes a great chef snack. For the fennel oil, Pick two cups each of fennel fronds and parsley, which is about one bunch of parsley and the fronds of two fennel heads. I like to store the parsley stems in the freezer and add them into my stocks later. Same thing can be done with the fennel stems. To get their herb oils bright green, the French Laundry has three specific steps. First, fill a pot with a large quantity of water, more than you think, and bring to a rolling boil. The large quantity of water will not only help you maintain a rolling boil when you drop the herbs in, but it'll help dilute any pigment dulling acids. Second is to add enough salt to the water so that it tastes like the ocean. One cup of salt for every gallon of water. This helps season the oil and also prevents the green pigments from leaching into the water. Cook the herbs for 10 to 15 seconds, then shock in a bowl of ice water to stop the cooking. Once cooled, squeeze out the water. It is easier to remove the water now than later. Since excessive blending can create friction, turning your oil brown, the French Laundry uses scissors to cut the herbs smaller before blending. Scissors are better than a knife, which can cause certain herbs to brown. Blend the herbs in two batches with just enough oil to cover. In total, 
you will need six ounces of oil. I use avocado oil, but any neutral flavored oil will work. To get the strongest flavored oil, the French Laundry stores the herb puree for one day in the fridge before straining. Use a linen-like, linked in the description, or a coffee filter to strain. To make the sauce, heat a wide pan, large enough to fit the bones in a single layer over high heat. Once it begins to smoke, Add enough oil to coat the bottom. I'm using avocado. Add in the bones, searing without stirring, for about 10 minutes. The recipe doesn't state this, but from past experiences using the quick sauce technique, I turned down the heat to medium high once I add in the bones to prevent burning. In order to develop a nice sear, do not move the bones around, or you can cause them to release their juices, creating more steam then sear. After the bones are GBD, golden brown and delicious, give the bones a flip. This is the point where I added in the excess trim. The bones will take about 10 minutes per side. It is important to get a good sear. This is how the sauce gets its flavor. For the first to glaze, add 4 ounces of water to the pot. And using a wooden spoon, preferably a flat one, remove all the fond from the pan. Once the pan is all sec, almost dry, the glaze with two ounces of chicken stock. As the stock reduces, the bone should deepen in color and the gelatin from the stock should start to coat the bones. For the mirepoix, cut three ounces of onion, two and a half ounces of carrots, and two ounces of leek into half inch pieces and add the vegetables in, which will provide the liquid for the deglazing. If you notice that the fond is dry on the pan, add in some of the water prevent it from burning, which will add a bitter flavor to your sauce. Cook until all sec and the vegetables are lightly caramelized. For the fondant of the glaze, add the remaining 8 ounces of chicken stock, 8 ounces of veal stock, and the remaining 8 ounces of water. Scrape up any remaining fond from the bottom, then bring to a simmer. Pull the pot halfway off the burner to create a convection simmer, which will push all the impurities to the side. Use a spoon to scoop all the impurities off and then to a cup with water. Dipping the spoon into water will help prevent incorporating the impurities back into the stock. Simmer for 30 to 45 minutes, skimming often until the stock has reduced to the level of the bones. Strain the sauce through a strainer into another bowl to separate the bones and vegetables from the stock. Double strain the stock into a clean pot and reduce by half or until nappe to coat the back of a spoon. Double strain into a clean sauce pot and hold off to the side. For the a la minute cooking, Heat a pan over medium high heat, coating the pan in a thin layer of oil. Sear the saddles until GBD all around for about 5 minutes. Transfer to a tray and place in the oven for 5 to 7 minutes or until cooked to medium. Clean out the pan and heat over medium high, adding oil when it is hot. Season the racks and kidneys with salt and pepper, then add the racks to the pan. The book says to cook for 3 to 4 minutes, but mine were well done, so I would stick to around 2 minutes. Add the kidneys into the pan during the last minute, flipping halfway and setting aside. Clean the pan out, heat on medium, and add a thin layer of oil. Place down the fennel slices and saute them until they are slightly caramelized, about two minutes per side. Remove the string from the saddles and cut into four even pieces. Slice the racks and kidneys both in half and set onto a tray with the fennel. Place under a low broiler with the plate until warm. 10 to 20 seconds while you warm the sauce. Squeeze a ring of fennel oil onto the plate and spoon the sauce into the center. Place down the two slices of the saddle and the fennel. Place down the two pieces of rack and kidney finishing with fennel fronds. I plated this up slightly different than the instructions in the book. Rabbit kind of tastes like chicken with a little bit more flavor. Overall, the fennel, rabbit, and bacon pair really well together and I would make this dish again. My favorite way to prepare the legs is to make rillette. Rub the rabbit legs with one teaspoon of kosher salt, then place them in a cryovac bag with four ounces of cold duck fat, two garlic cloves smashed, one bay leaf, six black peppercorns, one star anise pod, and four sprigs of thyme and seal. Place into an immersion circulator at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 degrees Celsius for four plus hours. Remove from the bag and strain the fat, then set off to the side. While still warm, shred the rabbit, then mix with duck fat 
and a splash of sherry vinegar. Place this into a stand mixer with a paddle attachment and mix until it is shredded. Using a damp towel, wipe down your counter and carefully lay the plastic wrap so that it does not bunch up. Add the rillette in an even layer, then roll into a cylinder using the counter to shape. Tie off both ends and place in the fridge until firm about two hours. This is great to serve as an appetizer with toasted brioche, mustard, cornichons, and a fresh herb like thyme. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch this video next where I break down the techniques that the French Laundry uses to make chicken stock.